So can you tell me just why why are you driving around in this truck? Because we are traveling in the road because we need, we need anybody he is not vote let him come out and go and vote. This is why we are making we are talking for the people who they are not vote until now. We need him to vote because this is our freedom. We need our freedom. Polls opened here in southern Sudan a few days ago, and polling stations in the capital of Juba are reporting a very high turnout. The SPLM announced that more than 60% of registered voters have now come out to choose between either unity or separation, surpassing the threshold needed for the vote to be credible. Now they're aiming for 100%, and staff at polling centers say that nearly everyone they registered has voted. The voters actually, they are good. The turnout is good, and... The problem is the distance, and most of them are these old people and blind people around here. And it is very it faces me, it challenges me as a chairman, because I need to assist them go through the voting process. That was Michael Ladu Silo, the chairman of the polling station in Somba, a village outside of Juba. The chief in Michael's village organized for a van to drive around, often playing booming music, and pick up the people who have had trouble getting to the polls. It's just one example of efforts in these final days of the referendum to get every eligible person to vote. This lady is, is very sick. She's really very sick. Almost now, more than one month, she's really sick. She has been she has been taken to Juba. She's found to be sick with malaria and typhoid, and she stayed there. And the sickness seemed to be complicating even the doctors in the hospital. She want to come and vote. She want to come and vote, and she has no power. The day before, she informed the husband. That I want to vote, but I cannot move. And the husband said he, he was going to use this wheelbarrow to bring her here. I said, okay, wait, I will inform to this to Rajab administration if they come, and then the subcommittee, because this one, also the subcommittee, is also can, can take care of that. In addition to the young woman with malaria and typhoid, the van picked up Albino Tombe Elia, who is 75 years old. He is blind and his legs are weak. He needed to be lifted into the van. When we got to the polling station, he slowly made his way to the booth, waving me away and telling Michael that he would speak to the American woman after he voted. He, as a grandfather, is making this vote so that peace may come to this land, so that he may leave the children behind him to be in peace, because the suffering has been since their fathers and up to him now, and. So he's praying that uh, may God really uh, help that let peace come to the black people in the south. They want to be alone so that they may also test peace at least one day. It's a sentiment shared by many. The trucks and vans working to get out the vote blast music from tinny speakers and rowdy young men shout to people along the road, to motorbike drivers, to women hauling water, to the youth milling about. Children emerge from their compounds as though they've heard the ice cream man and run after the truck, waving. Uh, so can you tell me what they're saying? Mm. About this song, we say that we need unity for the, all the tribe of the Southern Sudan. This is why this is the meaning of this song. We need unity. Let us unite. This is the meaning of this song. As David, the man shouting from the back of this pickup, hoped, the referendum has indeed been a unifying experience for Southern Sudanese, but the challenges that lay ahead are immense. The polls close tomorrow, and if all goes as planned, South Sudan will emerge as an independent country when an interim period ends in July. In Juba, Southern Sudan, this is Laura Heaton with the Enough Project.